hello guys welcome back to my channel how have you been doing guys i'm okay are you what about you guys so i'm grateful for the 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 subscribers you've given me i'm grateful for the views i'm grateful for the the little support for those who share for those whatever you do i'm grateful and so i'm back again with another video today and this video concerns kids and uh I think most people who want to be parents, those who are parents, we, we get to learn one thing or another at every point of our, you know, our, what can I say, our kule, our, our toto and all that. So today, I'm going to tell you a story about a, a lady, a very, I don't know, I don't want to give her names, but a lady by the name Michelle Blair. So welcome back to my channel, guys. Michelle Blair. A 35 year old woman was born in Detroit, Michigan, and she 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 she, is, she seemed to be like a, a, a person who was raised by a single mother and uh, not much is said if she had siblings or not but we are going to talk about this particular person because she was she she didn't have that connection with the the mother they didn't they didn't have a relationship he, she was just a mother but not a mom you know there's a difference of you having a, a, a having a mother and having a mom so it was different she was she was she felt a kind of distance with the mother the relationship was not healthy so when she was growing up she says that she was sexually abused with uh, by uh, her mother's female friend and uh, this kind of uh, attacked or, or let's say destroyed her childhood and made her have so much resentment towards her mother because she says that she told her mother but her mother did nothing about the whole incident and she continued the relationship with this woman who allegedly sexually molested her so it kind of made her have more resentment towards her mother and um, all this time when until the time she was 18 she li she kind of lived in a very a very uncomfortable environment according to her because now if now with that incident apart before they had a bad relationship now they, that incident even caused more strain in their relationship so, so michelle and anna grow and grow quite your environment and all that so when she reached 18 michelle got pregnant and uh, she gave birth to a baby girl and when she gave birth to this girl she kind of left the the house because the mother's house because she felt like she's not getting assistance you know, all of us, if you are a sing uh, not a single, but when you are a new mom, you need help. You need so many things to like understand motherhood, to like understand what you're supposed to do as a mother, understand how to take care of your child. You know, understand so many things because you are new into that world, because motherhood is a whole new world. Guys, like motherhood, you know, when you reach motherhood, that's when you remember now, it's never about you anymore. Like your whole life will never be about you. It's about your children. Everything you do, you you align your duties, you align your world according to your kids. So you are going to do something, and try to make it try, try to make sure that it doesn't hurt your kids in the process of you doing it. So Michelle, when she reached eighteen, I don't know why she felt like it was okay for her to leave the mother's house and like go out there and hustle on her own. But when she reached out there, upper inje. <laughs> when you are with your parents, when you are with somebody, you can run to when things go wrong. When Michelle didn't have that privilege of having, uh, it's not even about Michelle sometimes because so many people don't have places to run to or to run to when things go wrong. And Michelle was one of these person, those people. So Michelle Wakati Ali Toka, she went akanza kustrainuko inje working, working, you know minimal labor jobs that cannot sustain her with her daughter she kept calling back to like her parent who was the mother and maybe the relatives trying to ask for assistance as i do food toy rent you know remember when you are a mother you have to have a home you cannot keep hoping from a friend to a friend you have to have a, a, a place to call home, where to keep your child, to take care of your child. You know, no parent and takaku have a kid in a very unstable environment whereby anamalia neza it. Let live alone yourself. Mali aneza ambia mtu yuake up and your home. It's very important. So when she used to call for the to call to ask for assistance, the mother refused to help, the relatives never helped. 
the the it is alleged that the the the, the mother and the relatives say that Michelle could not keep her job and she didn't know how to manage her money so they stopped assisting her they not even assist her with her, they never assisted her they stopped taking her calls they stopped helping they, they just kind of just isolated her and i kind of uh, understand Michelle because at this point Michelle stopped calling Michelle stopped contacting them Michelle just uh, you know it's like she she disappeared from the face of the earth and uh, I understand. You can't keep calling somebody akusaidi, akusaidi, na akusaidi. You, you won't call forever. You reach a point and say, this person will never help me. You'll move forward from point A to B. Ata kama point B, takambaya. At least you know point A, there's nothing there. So wakati alifika, wakati ali... Ali realized Zivi, all this she she went to, she started living her life doing her things and everything within this span remember she had one child at, at, when when she when all this was happening she had one child and that child was called Gabby and uh, Gabby now you know as as they are going by you know when you, when you really as ladies or as girls when you 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 find you find you have nobody to run to some of us make mistakes I'm not saying some of you because I'm also I'm also, maybe I've been there or maybe I've seen people who have been there. You kind of find yourself running to, into the arms of another man. So she kind of found herself having four kids, plus Gabby now four kids. Throughout that, throughout some um, years, she, 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 she had a total of four kids. And uh, when she had these four kids, she kind of, you know, she still was training. She, remember now the, the first child who was Gabby, the second one, uh, the, the second one who was uh, by the name who went by the name Stony were girls, and then she uh, she ended up having another two boys. Now the first two kids who were Stony and uh, Gabby, they were they were they they had one father who was uh, who was um, named Alexander Dossi, and uh, the next bunch who was he was Steve, Stephen and uh, Stephen and uh, Matthew. Matthew Berry were um, kids to another man by the name Stephen Barry. So he had two baby daddies in short, and uh, she had two baby daddies, I'm sorry. So she continued, but at this point, she, she didn't have assistance from the fathers. She raised these kids alone. And um, when she was raising these kids alone, you know, the feeling or maybe the pain, the bitterness of the way she was treated when she was young, which was the sexual abuse, it kind of it kind of got to her, and she 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 was mistreating these kids from the word go. It's not like she reached a point and started mistreating. It's like it was it's what she was doing. She mistreated the, she mistreated them every day. She she starved them. The environment where she used she she kept the kids. Now the house was pathetic. The house was dirty. It was not fit for. It was not fit for a family. Not a, leave alone kids. Just a family and. Uh, it is said that she used to beat them with calling her, calling iron. Like to enjoy, to chana na yonye le ile inagakama netonga, netonga ni something hot metal, something like that. And uh, she used to beat them with cord wires, easy wires, a steamer. You know, she used to starve them. She used to leave them in the house in isolation. You know, it reached a point now when. Uh, in the, it is said that in 2015, this, the, there were some investigative officers who came to her house because CPS, which was a child protective service that always deals with the children's welfare, went to visit them because there was a report from school that these children were being abused. They were being, uh, you know, they were, they, they, they were not okay. And when, they, when this officer came to check, he said that he even saw burns in these children's bodies. He saw the, the, the marks of beatings. He saw them very thin, like starved. The house was pathetic. And every evidence was there that these children were not okay. But now the, the, officers, the officer now who came on 2015 did not really do anything to like assist these kids that uh, that information just went uh, down the carpet it, they did not they did not take action on the evidence that they had found and uh, this this just continued continued every day you know mistreatment the kids are suffering the kids are starving it reached a point now michelle saw that everybody was on her neck as far as the kids were concerned and uh, she decided to like isolate them by homeschooling them you know you remember 
I've read so many child abuse cases or maybe, you know, domestic abuse and all these things. You find that if somebody wants to hurt you, if somebody wants to mistreat you or do something wrong to you, first of all, they isolate you from the, from the surrounding or maybe from your people. They tell you not to visit people. Maybe not if you go to school, they stop it. You know, making sure you are in one place so that these people can corner you and maybe do something that they really wanted to do to you, which is hurt you. So Michelle did that. She took the kids from school and said that she was going to homeschool them. And uh, remember, this is a person who, is, who has a mental problem. Not really, says Semani Mwendazimu, but there's something wrong with her as far as Vitu Zilimuapenia when she was growing up. So she was not okay. Personally, Mimi, siyezi chukwa watutu wangu shule, ni kuje atina kuja kuwa homeschool. Not that I didn't go to school, but because I don't have the grace. Ya kufunza watoto. I can do them tuition, I can uh, do the for them revision, but mimi kukatu watoto wendi shule ni wafunza. I don't have that grace. So kuna kazi yenye walimu wanafanya yenye parent cannot do. So the fact that Michelle decided to do that, considering the fact that this lady had her own problems, had her own uh, mental disorder and all that, there, there was just so much in her mind. And uh, when she decided to take this child, these children out of school, it was going left now. When she decided to do that, everything went left. And um, it is said that uh, one day, the, the, the smaller kid now, the smaller son, remember the first two kids, the, two, the first and second, the second born were girls, and the third born and the fourth born were boys. Now the fourth born, who's the last born, by the name Matthew, kind of uh, started, uh, you know, started uh, behaving weird and the mother kind of asked her, asked him, Kwani Matthew, Kwani Shida Ninini and all that because he was weird and uh, he kind of, uh, you know, the mother tried to like interrogate the baby and know what was wrong. As if, you know, when I, uh, when I was reading this story and uh, I, I tried to imagine her asking the kid what was wrong and yet he, she has been mistreating these children. So at what point do you start now asking if, if there's something with the, wrong with your child? Because something is always wrong with your children. You are mistreating them. You are not, you are not, you know, you are not the mother that they expect you to be because you, a mother is somebody you run to when there's something wrong. But now these children cannot run to you when there's a problem. So the, Matthew started saying that now Stephen, the you know the third born had been uh, sexually abusing her abusing him and doing sort of so many so many things that i really did not understand and uh, she was really explaining uh, explaining things you know explaining things explaining things that didn't really matter actually when this when this story when this uh, story came out it was on uh, 14th march of 2000 not 14th 24th march of 2015 and um you know the the place where the this family this family the Blair family now the Michelle Blair house which the farm that they had rented the house from you know came to evict them because they were behind in in paying rent of about two thousand and uh, two thousand two hundred and six dollars something like that so when when they came to evict them they actually found that, found that nobody was at home and they actually decided to enter the house. So entering the house, they found the house was filthy, filthy, like filthy. The house, now they decided to kind of get things out of the house, you know, and kind of evict them. But remember, nobody was in the house, you know. But now, when they were busy taking things out of this house, is when now they realized things, something that they didn't really imagine that, you know, at nightmare, I don't even think those people who saw that thing, if they are alive today, I think it's something that still disturbs their, you know, their inner being. Because when they went to the freezer that was in the middle of the house and opened it, that's when they found the bodies of two babies inside. And oh my God, guys, like they were shocked because they did not expect to find such a thing. Like who does that? Because they were sure that this, this house, there were only a mother and kids. So who did this and when did this person do this? So they called the police. And then when the police came, they took the bodies and uh, started to look for Michelle. So guys, up and your, up and your story, Sasa. Any like to look at an issue, any Michelle, ako ako in a neighbor's house. Any ana ana babysit. She's babysitting another person's child while your own kids are in the freezer. And um, she was with the other two kids who are not who are not dead, Gabby and. Um, 
it was Gabby and uh, yeah, and Matthew. The one now was not who, who, the the Matthew one. The one who, who, who we are told that was being sexually abused. So, Sijalewa, how she actually did this because wakati police walikuja wakamchukua wakanini wakamtafuta. Actually, she was not far and she did not even run. She she was just available for them to ask whatever question they wanted. Wakampeleka interrogation room wakamuliza and she accepted that she had killed those children and that um. She, 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 she even called them demons. She was not sorry for whatever happened to these kids. And then when she was asked, that's when now she gave out the story saying that these kids, no, no, the, the younger boy who was Matthew uh, had complained that Stephen had, had sexually molested him, uh, that he had, um, you know, he had, uh, what can I say, sodomized him. He had uh, given him Windex. Windex ni kama easy spray za kushadirisha easy. Iyo alikuwa mempati ya kakunywa, alikuwa anamuka subui, anamuka jolea, yani kwa masikio, yani filthy things that she was explaining, things that I don't even understand why a kid would reason to such an extent, because that's being, you know, the, the highest point of being evil. But, you know, when she was being asked why, why, she, thinks that her, why she thinks that her kid can do that, alianza kusema that when she was sexually abused, akiwa mdogo, she she explained to her kids what had happened to her what had uh, the, you know the graphic details of what happened to her she told her kids so guys hapa ndo nawauliza swali hebu niambie hapo kwa comment section by the way because me si understand if something happened to me at see vitu mimi vitu zimeni happenia mingi tena sana but una you have to see Yani uchunga na kichungi, uangalie ni nini unambia mtoto at what point ya life yake. Because ni kuna watu tuwa 10 years, there's something neza wambia. But si, kuna vitu siyezi wambia because they're still young, they cannot digest some things. But when you unawaja, unajaza watoto wadogo vitu, vitu zenyaziko na umewa isolate, remember, wako kwa nyumba. They can as well start working on the things that you told them. So, 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 the information they have, that's the entertainment they have. When do you wambia? So I feel like if at all... Matthew did this to the brother. It is because of what this woman told them. Because I don't understand at what point she felt it was okay to tell this. Because this boy was nine years old and uh, the girl was around 13. I, I understand the 13-year-old and Gambiwa. That's okay because 13... Informed. I understand. But for a nine year old, at least let the child grow. Let the child explore by herself. But now Alkwa me isolate. So they are working on the little information that is ringing in their head. Maybe Alkwana and um and put into and put into action. Zila information yeah, Michelle Alkwa na wambia. So this lady, this, uh, this lady explained saying that she's not sorry that she actually did that to these kids. First of all, Alisema Stoney, not Stoney, but Stephen, yes, she even threw, like not threw, but poured hot water on her genitals, paka zika peel off. And uh, Akasema, she, she actually was not, uh, was not planning or, or did not mean to kill Stephen because the day that she had decided to like to stop uh, hurting him and like uh, let her be let him be is the day that the next day he died and uh, this boy died on on uh, 30th august of 2012 and now the question was if uh, if you did not want to kill kill him how can you unamwagia mtu majimoto ulikuwa una expect ni mfanikio unampatia chemicals because windex it's windex ni ni, ni kitu of, of course iko na chemicals umempea kunywe ume ume ume, ume, ume nini because there's a there's a point she said that alichukua belt akamfunga kwa shingo na akamuinua literally choking him to death so i don't know why I, I don't understand why she's saying that she did not plan to kill her to kill him and yet she was doing everything that could end up killing him and in another case also michelle says that she came into the house and uh, found gabby on the, at the door and gabby reported to her saying that uh, that mom kuja uone kitwenye kitwenye matthew anafanya madoli so when she when she went and saw she she she, she found him playing with the dolls sexually yani guest cha zingine azieleweki and michelle asked him michelle asked him kwani nani ashe kufanya hivyo mbona unafanya what hizo ni nini unafanya and uh, he accepted and said that that stony now the other sister was doing that to her remember at this point 
he, she had already killed uh, Stephen. Stephen was already in the freezer. And, uh, you know, it's like nine months later after Stoney was dead, after Stephen was dead. So, wakati alingia, akampata na cheza hivyo, akamambia, it was Stoney doing this to me and all that. Remember, Stoney is the second born who was the girl, the two girls, now the, one of them, the younger one. And uh, when all this happened, she, she, she kind of went to Stoney and asked her, and Stoney said that she hated Matthew because Matthew, people kept telling Matthew that he was cute. And he did not like, she did not like the fact that Matthew got complimented than her. So she, she kind of decided to do that to her. And all this, so now the, the, Michelle Blair started now mistreating him, mistreating her again. Remember, there is mistreatment in this family. But this now is another level of mistreatment. Now for these specific kids who are being accused of sexually abusing the other one. So she was beaten. And when uh, at this point where she was being beaten, Matthew said that um, Stoney took a uh, administration pad and uh, kind of squeezed the remnant into his mouth. Guys, I don't even believe I see you, see you how true this is because eh, they imagine, <laughs> you can imagine. I don't know if it was true or this woman was just uh, imagining things and uh, trying to recreate things. Me, I feel like she was trying to kill the person who sexually abused her when she was young and she's seeing these demons in her kids. I, do, I don't really think, the, think these things happened or if they happened, it, did, it was not this extreme the way I explain. So when he had the, when she had the, all these explanations that Matthew was giving she 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 continued beating up her, beating her up beating her with the with the ironing call she was yani vitu mingi beating na na inaitwaje hizi hizi wire za steamer pouring hot water on on her until now she could not take it anymore and she died it is said that Michelle to, told the firstborn who was Gabby to to take uh, the baby, the not baby, the, the, to take Stony into the freezer on top of the brother. Now this is where now the kids got to know where the other brother was. Remember, St Stephen is in the, the deep freezer, and uh, it kind of seemed like the other kids never knew Penya brother Alienda, and they cannot ask the mother because you can remember how the mother is violent and all that, so they cannot ask such questions. So. When uh, when she, when the, the when Gabby put the body in, in into the freezer, that's when they got to see the the bodies. And uh, Michelle said that she she said that she's going to 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 set to kind of give herself in to the police. And Matthew again said told her mother, no, you cannot leave me. You cannot leave us alone. And she kind of accepted not to to report herself. And it is said that Michelle called the police and asked them what happens if. You find your uh, you find your your kids molesting, kind of sexually abusing each other. What happens? And the police told her that if it's a family setup, they kind of come and take the kids out and f kind of, you know try to understand what the problem was. So Michelle Wakatialiskia that police wakikuja, what they will do is they will take the kids out of the family. She stopped. She said she was, she was not going to lose her kids. Point ni, ato upendi watoto wako, so mbonu na jifanya wakichukuli utasikia uchungu. You know? But that's the explanation she gave because she, she said she could have given herself out if they say, if they accept, they, if they did not say that they will take the kids out of the family. So, Michelle Akashikwa, wakati alishikwa, the fathers now, the father to these kids, uh, remember they had two fathers, Alexander Dorsey and, uh, and, and uh, Stephen, Bla uh, Stephen Barry. And uh, the, the jury tried to kind of understand why the, the fathers were not in these children's, uh, this, this children's lives. And they, under, they kind of understood that this, these people, they were, they were jobless. They did not have, have a, a means of uh, sustaining these kids. So the, the two kids who was... Uh, Gabby and uh, Matthew, they were put into the system. It is said that uh, Michelle Blair had an aunt who worked with the Child Protective Services. Guys, can you imagine the irony? Like all this time when these kids were suffering, there's an aunt or a relative in the family who actually worked in these farms, who knew how to handle the situation, but they did not, but he didn't, she did not come out and assist these kids. So it is said that these kids were given, these kids were given to, this, uh, to this woman who, who also complained and said that, that, he, that she knew that there was some kind of uh, abuse in the family and she tried to talk to Michelle Blair so that Michelle Blair 
could uh, take care of, you know, could change. But Michelle Blair blocked her and they never talked again. So Michelle Blair went to jail and went into the hearing and easy court, to, court procedures and all that. And she was um, sentenced to life in prison. And uh, the irony of this is that Michelle Blair was not sorry. She was not sorry. She was happy that she had taken them out because she hated child abusers. She hated sex, sex. You know, people who hurt who hurt other people sexually, and she actually called them demons. And she said that she has two children. She never had two kids. Those ones were demons, and she was sentenced to life in prison. But now, when she was sentenced, she requested for a death penalty. Guys, can you imagine? Ali requested death penalty which was never granted to her right now she's still in prison and she will never be out forever she is going to be in there and guys in attack because you understand even is this story mingi ni melan there's so many things our watu wenye wana abuse wa wakiwa wadogo they turn out to be something something so tragic they turn out to be watu wengine mwenye hawaezi kwa kwa community ama kwa society because they end up hurting others because of what is in their system the way they were brought up the way they were introduced into things that that really mess with their minds unajua kimesi wa mind yako kiwa mdogo wewe ku kutoa hiyo kitu ni hard unless you have help and if you could help is from your parents if your parents don't understand you then you will never get to be helped so i i think this led do you think that uh, these children actually did what this woman said or it's it's uh, it's what happened to her it's, that is coming out to life and she 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 kind of saw her kids as the demons when maybe she was told something small and it set her off and she started imagining things that never really happened. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked my story. I hope you get to subscribe, to like, to share. And also, always remember to come back to my channel and watch. Thank you, guys.